First off, I'd like to thank Aiden for the awesome suggestion of the ancient city of Edessa. If you have a topic that you'd want to see covered in the future, please drop a comment down below. Edessa was once a major population center and seen as a city of prominence for the Christian world. It is the location where the Christian relic known as the Image of Edessa was found. The Image of Edessa was an icon depicting Jesus, and its claim to fame was that the Image of Jesus had miraculously appeared. Many claim that the depiction was the true appearance of Christ. Additionally, Edessa also served as the seat of the famed school of Edessa, which laid the groundwork for the development of Syriac Christianity. Today, the ancient city of Edessa sits in modern-day Turkey. The city is currently known by the name of Urfa. Interestingly, Urfa's biggest claim to fame is its proximity to the Neolithic archaeological site of Gobekli Tepe. Today, Urfa is a run-of-the-mill Turkish provincial city with an almost exclusively Muslim population. This leaves us with a question. How did Edessa go from a major Christian city of the medieval world to a Turkish provincial town? The site of Edessa has been host to human settlement since 9000 BC. With close proximity to Gobekli Tepe, it's no surprise that Edessa itself was also host to a small Neolithic settlement. The earliest recorded name of the city was Adma, which was written in Assyrian cuneiform sometime around 2000 BC. Little was known of the city during this period due to lack of any sources beyond the transcription of the name. Nonetheless, Edessa as we know it was founded in 303 BC by Seleucus I Nicator. The name Edessa comes from the ancient capital of Macedonia which shares the same name. Seleucus, of course, was one of the generals or Diadochi who inherited Alexander's conquests. I also discussed the Seleucids in another video covering Demetrius I the Unconquered, which you can find linked down below. Seleucus founded the city as a classic Macedonian-style military colony. Despite the city being settled with Macedonian veterans, it was noted for having very little Hellenization for the time and being mostly Aramaic in origin. The city would remain under Seleucid control for the next 150 plus years, where it would continue to develop into a significant population center. The Seleucids would have a steep decline in the 2nd century BC, and as a result of said decline, a Nabataean Arab family known as the Abgarid dynasty founded the kingdom of Osroene in 132 BC. Upon the foundation of this new kingdom, Edessa was named its capital. Osroene was an Aramaic-speaking satellite state of the Parthian Empire until the conquest of Edessa by Tigran the Great of Armenia. Edessa would serve as the capital of Armenian Mesopotamia until Pompey's defeat of Tigran in 66 BC. From there, the city would be returned to the Abgarid dynasty, but in exchange, they would now serve as client kings of Rome. The kingdom of Osroene would continue to be a part of the Roman world in a client capacity until 214 BC when Caracalla ended the Abgarid monarchy and directly annexed the region. Osroene would serve as a Roman province for the next 400 years, until the conquest of much of the Byzantine Empire by the Islamic Caliphate in the mid-600s. It would be during Roman ownership when Edessa would reach its apex. Edessa would become a major center of early Christianity, and the city is rumored to have the first Christian king in history. It is believed that Edessa had a sizable Christian population from as early as 190 AD onwards. It served as a major center of Christian learning, being the seat of the school of Edessa until 489 AD, when Emperor Zeno of the Eastern Roman Empire ordered the school closed over religious disagreements. Interestingly, Edessa would also serve as a center for other religious movements like the Elksets and Manichaeism. In 639 AD, the city would surrender to Rashidun forces without a fight. Under Rashidun and later Umayyad Caliphates, the city had somewhere between 300 and 360 churches and was said to have a very small Muslim population. In 825 AD, the first anti-Christian edicts were enforced in Edessa, leading to the destruction of several churches and the construction of a mosque directly in front of the city's main cathedral. In 943 AD, the Byzantines would besiege Islamic-held Edessa. For those of you paying attention, yes, that does mean the Romans have returned to Edessa after a 300-year-plus hiatus. Byzantine emperor at the time, Romanos I Lecapenos, had made it a goal of his to acquire the Christian artifact known as the image of Edessa. 
The Islamic leaders and town folk of the city would make a deal with the Byzantines in handing over the much desired Christian artifact in exchange for being spared. The ownership of Edessa is relatively unclear from 944 until 990 AD. What does seem to be clear though is that the city had re-entered the orbit of the Byzantines. It appears that the Byzantines either backed local rulers or they governed the region directly depending on the Byzantine emperor of the time. This would remain the case until 990 AD when the Arab Numerid dynasty would capture the city. Numerid rule would be popular at first, but by the 1020s they were hated by the locals. In 1025 AD, the city's population appealed to the Kurdish Marwanid to free them from Numerid rule. Edessa would remain under the rule of the Marwanid dynasty until the Byzantine reconquest of the city in 1031 by George Maniakis. George Maniakis would rule Edessa and the surrounding land for several years as an essentially independent Byzantine king. Unfortunately, in May of 1036 AD, the Numerid dynasty plundered Edessa, even killing the local Byzantine governor. Despite the sack, the Byzantines would retain control of the city, which at this point was noted to have a Christian majority population, but not one as overwhelming as it once enjoyed. Between 1065 and 1071, the city would be besieged three separate times by the Seljuk Turks, essentially reducing the region to a war zone. Interestingly, even after the cataclysmic battle of Manzikert in 1071, Edessa remained a part of the Byzantine world. After the battle, the city was supposed to be handed over to the Turks, but the local Byzantine governors did not cooperate. The city was taken by Basil Apokopis, who was a Byzantine general under the command of Villaretos Brachimos, a Byzantine usurper and warlord who controlled much of the southern portion of the empire after the Battle of Manzikert. Villaretos would give up his imperial ambitions in 1078 AD and would rule his lands as Duke of Antioch until his death in 1087. Edessa would be captured by the Seljuk Turks in 1087 AD after a three-month siege finally ending Byzantine-slash-Roman rule in the region permanently. This is a good time to mention that over the course of the 11th century, the area surrounding Edessa was populated by Armenian immigrants. The Syriac Aramaic native ruling class had been supplanted by the end of the 11th century by an Armenian Christian ruling class. With that being said, in 1094 AD, only seven years after the Seljuk capture of the city, Theodoros of Edessa, a Byzantine Armenian general who was serving as the Seljuk appointed governor of the region, declared independence. The Turks attempted to retake the city that same year, but were repulsed after a two-month siege. Despite being of Armenian descent, Theodoros was of Greek Orthodox faith and was seen largely as a Byzantine by his Armenian subjects and was not well liked. In 1098, Theodoros had to appeal to the Crusaders for help against the advancing Seljuk Turks. At this point, the First Crusade had been underway for two years, seeing major victories and restoring much of Anatolia to Byzantine rule. During the time of Theodoros' appeal, the Crusader army was busy besieging Antioch, but in a bid for a land grab, one French nobleman, Baldwin of Bouillon, went to Edessa. He then captured the nearby settlement of Terbessel, at which point Theodoros of Edessa allied himself with Baldwin. Baldwin would eventually befriend and convince Theodoros to name him as his heir. As soon as Theodoros made the proclamation recognizing Baldwin as his heir, Baldwin ordered his guards to arrest Theodoros. Theodoros eventually agreed to hand over the city to Baldwin in exchange for safe passage for him and his family. But unfortunately for Theodoros, on March 9th, the Armenian inhabitants of the city murdered the former ruler, likely at the command of Baldwin. Baldwin would then declare himself Count of Edessa, officially creating the first Crusader state. The local Armenians saw the Crusaders as liberators from the Byzantines, despite the fact that Theodoros was in fact Armenian himself. The Armenian population would become heavily intertwined with their new French rulers. The next three Counts of Edessa would all marry Armenian noblewomen. The city of Edessa enjoyed heightened levels of prestige due to being the first crusader capital in the world, and became a very well-known city across Europe. The various counts of Edessa would continue to fight the Seljuk Turks over the next four decades, and they would actually keep maintaining and expanding the realm until the 1130s AD. In 1131, Jocelyn II of Edessa had ascended to the throne. Jocelyn would prove to lack strategic thinking when it came to foreign policy. 
He spent more time arguing with fellow crusader states than addressing Islamic forces threatening his realm. In 1144, the Islamic Zengid dynasty besieged Edessa and captured the city from the crusaders. Jocelyn would continue to rule his lands west of the Euphrates and would even recapture Edessa in 1146 AD. Despite the brief recapture of the city by the Crusaders, Nur ad-Din of the Zengids would obliterate Jocelyn's force in the 1146 siege of Edessa. Jocelyn would escape the battle with his life and wouldn't be captured until 1150 AD. Nur ad-Din considered the Christian population to be complicit with the Crusaders and massacred up to 30,000 inhabitants and took 16,000 more as slaves. It is believed out of the entire Christian population of the city, only 1,000 escaped. With that, arguably the oldest Christian capital in history was destroyed and would never recover. The city would be reduced to little more than a footnote in history. Around the 1180s, the city was believed to have about 24,000 inhabitants, most of whom were presumably Muslim. By 1260 and the Mongol conquest of Edessa, the city was noted to be desolate, with just a few Turkish nomads living amongst the ruins. Finally, according to Ottoman records, in 1518, the city had a population of 5,500 people, about one-tenth of its medieval levels. The modern-day city of Urfa now sits in Edessa's place and has a rich modern history of its own, but this history is largely separate of that of the ancient city of Edessa. Thanks for watching, and if you have a suggestion for what you want to see next, please drop it down below in the comment section.